Okay, we're at the back wall and we've got our tape measure pulled across the very back of the hoop here and the hoop here, 24 foot. Every eight foot, we're gonna be putting in a four by four treated post. So we're putting one right down the middle and then four feet from the middle, we'll be putting up another set and then four feet out, putting up another set. So we get the auger, we're gonna start drilling some holes and we're gonna concrete these posts in. Okay, we got our holes dug, we got our posts in the hole. The holes are about three foot deep. The three 16 footers that you see right here in the middle, they're gotta be trimmed to fit. Happens to be that our 12 footers on the ends, they are gonna be just fine without trimming. I've got three chainsaws. I chose my little battery powered works chainsaw because uh, at the top of a ladder where it gets real sketchy, I don't wanna be wielding some big heavy duty chainsaw whenever I can just get the job done with this. Okay, a little change of plans. We decided to just take it out of the hole rather than me being at the top of this 10 foot ladder. Maybe it's an eight foot ladder and uh, trying to chainsaw that, we just take it out, take it to the miter saw and just cut it that way. Okay, we got all of our posts cut to length. Now we're gonna take this strap and this is gonna go around the hoop and then we're gonna fasten that and then this plate will get screwed to the front of our four by fours. So when we do that, we'll make sure that we're lined up with the hoops across the front. We'll have all these screwed in and then we'll start dropping concrete.
Okay, we're at the front of the high tunnel. We're getting ready to do our end wall here for the main doors. We've decided that we're gonna do double main doors that open up uh, eight foot. So one door will be able to open up four foot, pedestrian door can go in and out of. And then if you wanna get a tractor in there to maybe till or do something like that, then we can open both of those doors up. We're leaving ourselves the option for that. Um, I don't know if I'll even bring a tractor in here, but at least we'll have the option to do it. So we're gonna go a 16 footer, a 16 footer, and then a 12 footer and a 12 footer. And uh, so that'll be four posts going in on that end. Okay, we're running into dark here and <clears throat> I'm getting really low in light. I figured I would go ahead and mark off where my roll up sides are gonna go. So we'll be placing our hip boards. I'd like about five foot, we're deep in the south. And so anything that's gonna be covered in the summertime is gonna be exceptionally warm. So the higher I can get my side walls and open them up, the more heat that I can let go and uh, get more air, fl air flow through here. Some people that live a little further north, they might like their hip boards about three foot. <clears throat> now, I've got my ladder out here and I've put my laser on top of it. And the laser is just a few inches right over the five foot mark. And I figured, yeah, that's pretty good. So what I gotta do is I got, since we're low light, I went ahead and turned my laser on. And if you can see in the camera right here, I've got my laser shining and I can clearly see all the way around where that line is hitting every pole. I've got my ladder in the lowest part of the of the hoop house which happens to be right in the center so um, a little bit taller from that hip wall down to the ground than I am from this hip wall down to the ground but only by an inch or so because my ground isn't completely level, but to the naked eye, it seems level. So I'll go ahead and take my paint marker and I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna just make a, a mark here so that when I get ready to put my hip boards in place during the daylight hours, I'll have a mark to go by and I'll know exactly where those hip boards need to be placed.
And I skipped that one because there's a dead spot in the laser where the little plastic pieces hold the little cap up. <clears throat> so there's not a laser beam. So I had to gently move the laser a little bit to get a beam on that one. If you're curious about what the laser is that I'm using, and if this is your first time watching, you skipped ahead of the build, I talk about the laser when I'm putting my ground post in, so, um, or the ground stakes. So if you wanna know more about the laser, go back to that video and I'll talk just a little bit more about it. rotated that laser and I can come back and mark this one. I'm kind of marking it to the side a little bit so if I'm standing on the outside connecting my hip boards I can look from the outside and see where that is rather than putting my mark on the inside of the pole. All right, that's it. We've got them marked all the way around. We can come back when we're ready to put on the hip boards and we've got our marks. I'm happy.
All right, it's been two weeks since that last segment that you saw. The next thing we're going to do now that we've completed our end walls is we're going to start putting on our baseboards and our hip boards will be what we do next. The baseboards are two by six pressure treated and I figured that I wanted the end of my boards to land in between a hoop and not on a hoop. So therefore I've got a 10 foot board here which the end of the board terminates in the middle of this hoop and then I have an eight foot here terminates there an eight foot here and they also terminate right in the center of the hoops that way I can come back and put a piece of board over that and hold those boards together and you really don't want the end of your boards to terminate on here because then you'd have to put four screws in there to hold it and that's that's not uh, an answer but I've got eight foots all the way down and then this last one is a 10 footer that's the way the math comes out on this 60 foot hoop house so when you're laying out your boards make sure you take that factor into account is where your boards are going to terminate and your next board is going to pick up you do not want to have the ends of your boards terminate on a steel hoop we've already got our boards laid on this end and on the other end um, we're going to use this wood tech screw. It's got a drill tip on the end, just like your regular um, tech screws do that we put the rest of the metal up with. The threads are a fine thread, and that's also going to go into the metal. And then you have a wide end that's going to hold your, the wood up to that, um, up to each one of those hoops. It's not so much the thread is going to really um, be biting into the boards. That's not the factor here. You need the wide head to hold that, that two by four in. This is going to be a star head tech screw. So I've got a, uh, a hex head set that goes my ratchet set. And I've put a ratchet adapter on the end of my drill, just like my regular tech screws. And then we're going to go ahead and go all the way around and start putting these baseboards on. Okay, although the end of that tech screw has a cutter on the end of it, it is much easier to drill the wood with a smaller wood boring bit because this wood boring bit just drills right into it nice and easy where I really got to get behind the, uh, the tech screw and push it hard to cut the wood. Then I'm tired before I get to the metal. And then I just noticed then whenever I drill, uh, drilled the pilot hole, put the tech screw in, the tech screw went right into the metal. And it seemed to be a much uh, faster process. So a little tip for you.
Okay, we're getting ready to put the hip boards up. If you remember in a little previous episode, I took the laser and set it on top of my step ladder, and then I marked all the way around on my hoops where I want my hip boards to go. That mark is still there. That's what we're gonna raise our two by fours up, we use the clamps, and then we're gonna install our hip boards according to where those lines are. Now that we've got our hip boards up and our base boards up, everywhere where the, the boards meet, we've got to put in a brace to give that area strength. So we're just going to take some cutoffs from some two by fours and some cutoffs from some two by sixes that I had laying around. And we're just going to use this to brace with. I've got some three inch uh, carpentry nails in my nail gun and we're just going to use that. <laughs> 